Hello, welcome back to Jimbo's PC Worlds. Today it's time to add the last cooler for the current series to the Cooler League. <laughs> So, based on that intro, you're thinking, why is this the uh, last cooler added with the current season? Reason being is because the test bench behind me, I'm going to be upgrading. And I'll show you now how I'm going to be upgrading the test bench. I'm going to be upgrading to an i9-12900K. Now, this isn't current generation in terms of, you know, you've got the 13900K, the 14900K. But this is still a socket 1700 CPU and it's also a bit of a toaster oven. So by basically moving to the more chiplet based CPU and also you know, going to one that actually generates a lot of heat, I'm hopefully going to um, basically retest all the coolers and see where they go. So with that in mind, what's that gonna mean? Uh, what it means is I'm gonna have to go for all the coolers I've tested so far. I'm not gonna retest all of them. You know, backtracking on what I just said, I'm only really going to test the ones that are 1, 1700 uh, compatible. Um, what that might mean is some of the coolers may have had an upgrade since, like the Hyper 212 may have had, say, a new version that has the 1700 compatibility built in, so I may go with that, revisit that another point. But what I'll be doing is slimming down a lot of the coolers, basically, I'll get rid of some of the coolers that didn't perform well and I'll try and because I don't think they'll be able to handle a 12900K to be perfectly honest it's not really worth testing them as well so we should be left with a set of coolers that set of coolers is going to include the cooler I'm going to be testing today so without further ado let's have a look at the cooler that I'm going to be testing today I'm going to be testing the Thermalrite Phantom Spirit 120 so as you know, this will be the second Thermalrite 120 uh, cooler that I've tested. So I'll be very interested to see how this cooler compares to the previous one that I tested. Also, because of the cost, which is roughly less than $40, how it compares with, say, the last one I tested, which was the um, Cooler Master Stealth Cooler, which cost a lot more money and is larger, and but th does it perform better? with the cost involved. So it's going to be interesting to see. Um, also one of still testing on a 10700K, it'll be interesting to see how the cooler I'm testing today will then hold up against a 12900K and we'll find out once I retest all the coolers and we'll go for all of that. All right, so without further ado, as always, we'll go through the install, then I'll go through the uh, uh, thoughts on the install, then I'll go through the, the results from the testing and then I'll give you my final thoughts and conclusion on the cooler. So on we go, let's get on with the install.
twice. It was a pretty standard cooler to install. It installed pretty much identically uh, to the previous Thermal Right 120 uh, cooler that I installed. Backplate sticks through, nuts on, bars across, screw it on. Relatively simple. Um, neither fan was attached with, out the box for this one, so you had to install the fans and against it's those wire things, which I'm really not a fan in, pun intended as always. Um, so it, it, it was okay. Um, it wasn't too bad, you know, you got a splitter in the box for your fan so you could put it all onto the one fan header which was really cool as always. Um, the, fans, the fan cables weren't too long so it was easy to tuck the cables away. It's okay looks wise, it's not the most attractive and when installing those two fans it looks okay. But you know, it wasn't too bad. As an install it, was, it wasn't, wasn't, wasn't the worst and wasn't the best either so it was kind of middle of the road. Alright, so now I've gone through the install. Let's get to those test results. So base temp, the Phantom Spirit finished second or joint second in the table with a base temperature of 26 degrees. Um, not, it's still a pretty good result as always. The room I'm testing in was kept, kept to the stable temperature of 72. Um, so this is actually a pretty good result. Base temperature, I don't put a lot of stock in, but that's what the base temp was. Bass sound. The Phantom Spirit finished with a bass sound of 34.5, which roughly puts it middle table. It's not the worst, but it's not the best either. But keeping in mind it's got two fans, so that's probably not a bad result. Cinebex score. Again, this cooler did really, really well in this. It finished with an average score over the runs of 4861, four, so 4861, which puts it sixth in the table. You know, again, not the best score, but really, once you start talking about the group, which is a sixth above, which is like the Phantom Spirit, the Deep Cool Assassin, the AM Choice, the, the M824 Stealth, Frozen Note, and the ID Cooler, there's really not a much difference between those scores. It's a very, very slim margin. So all of that group of coolers at the top, really, with the basing of averages, and if we did more runs, they would probably become very, very close. Max Temp. The average max temperature over the runs was 60 degrees. In fact, it was spookily consistent. It didn't get over 60 in any of the runs, which is a great result and puts it third in the table, which puts it in a really good position. Max sound. Max sound was only 35.3. So realistically, the, the actual decibel sound only went up from 34.5 to 35.3 when this thing was actually being taxed with a Cinebench run. So really it didn't get going. Now at this point in time, because the temperature was pretty low, the score was high and the sound was relatively low, it tends to tell me the fans didn't really have to pick up, which really says that this cooler has got a considerable amount of capacity left in it. The scoring ranges are the same. And if we go to the top half of the table, ladies and gentlemen, we have a new league leader for the end of the current season. So I can say, for season one, the Thermal Right Phantom Spirit is the champion of the current season. Well done to that cooler. Let's see how it does in the second season. But also, the bottom of the table, there is no change there. And after season one, the Enemax ETS T40 Fit finishes firmly bottom of the table. And needless to say, I won't be included in the testing for season two. All right, well, that's the scores done. Let's go to my final thoughts and conclusion. So as you can see through the test results and the position in the table, the cooler finished top of the pile. What a great result. So to finish off season one, effectively, of the Cooler League, we finished it with a new champion. But it's also going to be very, very interesting to see where all of these coolers, including this one, finish when we test it on a different CPU. So I'm looking forward to that. But in the short term now, do I recommend this cooler? For the price, it's just absolutely tough to beat. You know, I said earlier the install wasn't the best, but it wasn't the worst either. It's not the most attractive cooler, but it performs bloody well, and it's uh, for the price, you just it really just can't be beat. So it's no surprise in any way, shape, or form that it finished top of the pile. It wasn't that loud. It the temperatures it kept really, really low. It wasn't the best in terms of temperatures, but you know, for a 10700K, it would be probably the same for around a 13700K, something like that. This is a top cooler and it will do the job. But as I said earlier, it'll be interesting to see when we move up to a 12900K, how for the price this sits against the more expensive coolers like the M824 Stealth, you know, once we get to the, that bigger, more hotter CPU. 
All right. Well, I hope you found all this useful. Um, if you did, please toss a like on the video and don't forget to subscribe because subscribers are always welcome. If you do subscribe, hit the bell icon to be notified of future content. I try to release a video once a month. Sometimes I miss that cadence, but because I don't release them very often, hitting that bell icon will be very helpful because then you'll be notified when the content comes out. If you've got any comments, positive or negative, please leave them below. Also, if you've got any questions about the cooler or any other coolers that I've covered so far, please the comments down below. I also have links in the description for all of the coolers I've covered in season one. So if you want to buy any of them, they're there. And that's it. And as always, take care. Thank <laughs> you.